Welcome to today's webinar, courtesy of the Kentucky Small Business Development Center, right here in Louisville. We're all about hooking you up with free, super secret business coaching and training services. It doesn't matter if you're just dipping your toes in or gearing up for a big expansion. We've got the goods, the tools, and the know-how to help you win. To get the scoop, cruise on over to LouisvilleSmallBusiness.com or hit us up at 502-977-5800. Big thanks for tuning in to today's webinar. Feel free to drop your questions or chat it up with our speaker using the chat feature. Let's dive in. Hi, welcome friends. Thanks for joining us for another Toolkit Tuesday. I'm Dave Atkin. I'm the director here at the Louisville Small Business Development Center. Um, as you just heard, we are part of a nationwide network. Also, we have a statewide network here with 13 centers that you can tap into for free resources um, regarding your business startup needs or just to grow your business. So thanks for joining us today. And just as always, because we are often technologically challenged, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there you'll see a toolbar. And if you don't, uh, take your cursor and hover down there and it should pop up. And there you'll see the chat feature. And if you wouldn't mind, just typing your name, tell us hello and where you're joining from. This is the fun part uh, that I like because I like to understand where everybody's hanging out at these days. So there's Janet who is joining me today. Janet is uh, my coworker and good friend. Um, she's kind of working things in the background for us. There's Cynthia from Midway, Kentucky, down there in horse country. Good to see you. Amy from Shelbyville. I was just there over the weekend. Love Shelbyville. So um, yeah, just say hello. And oh, hey, Mary. Mary Neekamp from Cabinet Economic Development, one of our good friends. We work with, with Mary all the time. Great resource too. So Maybe, uh, Mary, you should probably <laughs> share your your email address there in case someone uh, has any questions for you during the day. So there's Pamela from Midway. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, you know, and as we go through today's presentation and discussion, if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the chat there and we'll get to them and we'll be able to ask and talk to our, our guests today. And, um, you know, <clears throat> going forward, um, this is a subject that's very important because um, thinking about exit planning is so important. And, you know, the demographics of the business ownership um, in this country is staggering and that most of, you know, the small businesses are owned by older folks often. And so there's kind of a big shift in demographics where um, that, um, you know, these companies of wealth need to be transferred or, uh, also, these people, as a business owner, most of your wealth and assets are tied up into this business, not so much cash, cash easy, you know, they're, they're um, asset heavy generally. And um, so if you wanted to retire, you know, how, how do you retire when you got something that really is not, you know, uh, doesn't have a lot of cash to, to, to support you? So um, the other thing that is important to think through when we use this idea of exiting your business is that no matter what you think or what you want to do, at some point you will exit your business. And in the exit planning world, we call that the four Ds. You know, it could be through distress, uh, disability of the owner or death of the owner or divorce. All these things happen and they can cause a, a business transfer and stuff. So it's it's all, it's very, very great uh, idea to, you know, plan ahead and think through this whole idea of, of planning for exit. Whether you do it now or later, um, it, it's, a, it's an important part of your business planning process. So um, we've invited two great resources for you guys today, uh, Dylan Cole and Michael Bush from Northwestern Mutual Life. They deal with this stuff every day. And so welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us today. I know you guys are super busy, and I really appreciate taking time out of your busy schedule to come and visit us today. So welcome, Dylan. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, David. Honored yeah, to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So I'm just going to step back. Uh, and join Janet here and just get out of your way and let's uh, let's get going here. And again, if you have any questions or comments, just put them in the chat and we'll certainly jump right in with those. That's great. Well, thank you, David. This is uh, this is fantastic to be here today. We're honored and uh, excited to provide some value today and 
uh, hopefully give everybody something to walk away with where they're thinking, you know, we we should probably uh, look into this a little bit further and maybe spur along some action for you. Um, as David said, my name is Michael Bush. I started with Northwestern Mutual 22 years ago um, and have been working with families and businesses on their financial planning and estate planning and uh, business planning, exit planning, et cetera, over the last 22 years. I've partnered uh, with Dylan Cole um, over the last several years. We've formally come together to, to build a team ourselves. And um, I, I think it's very, really interesting because my guess is a few years ago, we might have been in the audience in a, in a conversation like this, learning um, you know, from, from some resources as well. Uh, it's, a, it's a very pertinent topic in our industry uh, when, when you think of building out a secession plan and thinking through how to take care of clients, um, not only during our lives, but uh, beyond us. And, and that was a real motivational factor for, for Dylan and I to join, uh, to join forces. And we were thinking about, you know, how do we, how do we take care of clients during their lives, but, but also beyond their lives? How do we make sure that even when we're gone, um, that the clients and their children and their businesses are being supported and served. And and uh, we wanted to build something that was bigger than just the two of us and, and something that would certainly last longer than us. Um, and I think that's what a lot of a lot of people that we work with want as well. When they, they want their business to to survive beyond them and to continue to uh, to be around. Um, oftentimes that's the case. Sometimes it's not. And we'll talk about that today, too. Um, but Dylan and I came together. I think it's important to, when you think about partnership, you think about secession, you know, for us, we wanted to marry our values. We wanted, um, the values that we both share, um, to, to come together and, and be even stronger. So that was important, uh, for us to have the same values and similar client focus, uh, philosophy towards planning. But what was different was the way that we, um, the way that we think oftentimes and operate oftentimes, our strengths and weaknesses complement each other in, in various ways. I think that was really important in us coming together. Uh, but again, that desire ultimately to build something that's going to last longer than us was, was really important. We had a quick story here, Dylan, and then I'll let you jump in. We had a, a mentor of mine actually over the last 22 years. So he's in the financial planning business. Um, several years ago, he had a client uh, one of his biggest and best clients um, come to him and 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 asked him a very pertinent question, very direct question. And he said, uh, the client asked asked the advisor. He said, "What happens to me and my family if something happens to you? If you died tomorrow, or if you decided to retire tomorrow, what happens to my family and my client and and my and my money?" Um, and the advisor didn't have a very good uh, response. <clears throat> and so the client told him, you have one year to develop a game plan to answer that question. So that really lit a fire under him, obviously. And, uh, and he worked for the next year to put together a game plan to, to have a, a much better response to that question. And and, and he did that. He, he was able to uh, develop a team and, and find a couple uh, partners who would who would succeed him. And they they began introducing uh, the new partners to clients to build those relationships. But but what that what that really prompted us to think about is any service industry, and we're we're certainly in a service industry. Our clients are wondering that. Our clients are thinking about that. They're wondering, okay, what happens if you're not around anymore? What happens if 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 you don't make it to the office tomorrow? How how am I going to continue to be served? So that prompted us to um, Dylan and I to to form our team, and, and hopefully after today we'll be able to spur some action with with some of you as well, or at least give you some nuggets to to take away. Dylan, why don't you hop in there, bud? Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Michael. And as Michael had mentioned, this is just very relevant to our situation as a, a you know we're business owners and partners and have a team, small business ourselves. So when we were you know, asked uh, for the opportunity to come speak on this. Um, certainly happy to jump at that opportunity to help out and serve others. Um, naturally, with a, a webinar, we figured having some slides would be helpful to be going through today. So I'm going to share my screen. 
Um, if we don't get through all of the slides, or either way, if we do or if we don't, we'll share these over to you to um, review after the, the call, uh, because I want to make sure that we leave time at the end for Q&A, because uh, oftentimes I feel like that's the most beneficial time that we have together. But then I would kick it off with some things that we're typically hearing about, uh, you know, what's keeping us up at night as a as a business owner. Things like, can I retire in 10 years? And uh, can the business fund my retirement? What if my partner dies like David had brought up? You know, what happens to my business then? Should I be succeeding it to my son? Um, I've guaranteed a loan for this business. I could lose everything if something goes wrong, if I can't work, if I get hurt. How does this impact my family? Maybe thinking about expanding the business and, um, you know, knowing can, can I get the credit that I need to go where I want to go? Uh, the business is a huge part of my situation personally. So how am I going to make sure that my family and myself, I can enjoy the benefits of all this hard work? So many questions. What are the answers? Where can we go with this? Doing all of this work myself, how can I attract some talent and um, help out with delegating and leveraging others to further grow my, my business? Um, so many things that are commonly going through our mind and keeping us up at night naturally uh, wired to be an entrepreneur. And I just want to share with you initially that this is very, um, you're not alone. This is very common with every business owner that we work with. And as someone who, who runs a business, as we do ourselves, we understand that the financial challenges okay. that we face and how they wear on you over time, it's, it, it's made us passionate about helping other business owners plan for both their, their company and their personal financial security so that they can sleep better at night. Um, so a little bit of backstory on our team there. Now, let's, let's share a couple objectives or common priorities that we hear from business owners that we're working with. On the business side, uh, we'll oftentimes hear, you know, I want to make sure that I'm protecting what I've already built make sure that I can stay cash flow positive and be growing, even if something bad happens to me or, or maybe to a key employee, making sure that I have an understanding of the value of my business and how to value that. For key employees, uh, continually focusing on recruiting and retaining good talent. Um, for you personally, as the business owner, making sure that I can provide for my family, have an exit plan for retirement and making sure that, again, if anything bad happens to me or the employees, that there's no adverse impact to that picture long term. Also navigating where I should be parking dollars to build my wealth and how much to invest in my business versus keeping liquid outside of my business, a, a balanced approach there. And then for the employees, you know, oftentimes we're, we're hearing, I want to make sure that my, my employees are taken care of and I'm providing competitive benefits that will make sure that their personal planning uh, is taken care of and they're happy where they're at. So we'll expand on a lot of these uh, before doing so. I want to talk about four critical assets that I think, you know, sometimes we'll when I always consider these as assets of our business, but as a business, as a business owner, oftentimes we, we think of our balance sheet as assets versus liabilities. Now, there are four different types of assets in any business that we have. We have our physical assets, our buildings, cars, trucks, machinery. Then we have our employees, that's our human capital. And this one's easy for us um, to overlook as an asset, but our employees are extremely important to our business. And oftentimes what people are buying out, that service that you're providing. And whether it's the employees that we already have or we're looking to expand by bringing in um, the biggest, the brightest, the best people out there, they should be considered an asset for our business. Then you have the business itself. 
So this is the softer side of things like goodwill, reputation, client relationships. And last asset we have is us, the business owner, the key person that holds all of this together. So that's the four critical assets of a business. And then we have four areas of the business. The first two at the top here, broader categories here, uh, are risk management and employee benefits. So risk management is, these are the steps that you have to take to protect your business, protect what you have now from those unforeseen events. Then we have employee benefits, which are gonna be the, the various plans and incentives that help you recruit and keep the employees that you already have to help continue to grow your business and stay competitive in the market. The third would be, our exit planning strategy. Now, the, the top items there are gonna tie directly into this exit plan and uh, what we're gonna get on the back end. So we always wanna plan with foresight and know every move we're making today is going to further enhance our exit planning strategy. So on the exit planning strategy, at some point in the future, you're no longer going to be running the business. Whether you're retiring, you're transferring ownership to the kiddos, we're, we're selling the business to um, somebody else, other opportunities, or, or maybe we need to convert the business um, as an asset before something bad happens to us. And we have some agreements in place of what next steps are from there. On the bottom right-hand side, we have uh, personal financial planning. And you might not think of this as a part of your business, but as a business owner, I'm all, I'm sure a lot of you all can feel this, that it is very much integrated, your personal planning and your business planning together. But it's important to make sure that this is integrated because having an idea of what you need to be financially independent on the personal side of planning is very powerful position to be in for your exit planning strategies. Michael, you yeah, want to you know, expand yeah, just, on that a make, little bit? Makes me makes me think about a, um, a a situation fairly recently that we've worked with uh, with a with a specific client. Um, she's looking to potentially exit her business at some point, but not exactly sure when. Um, she's been approached a little bit here or there um, with some opportunities to to look into to selling, but doesn't really know what the right number is. And and obviously she'll she'll do the valuation and 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 be able to to go to the table, um, you know, feeling confident about that. But but I think more importantly for her, she wants to make sure she when she does this, when she does sell the business, that it's enough money to take care of her for the rest of her life. And that she doesn't have to feel pressured to either go back to work or start another business at some point. Um, and so it's it's really important. So the conversations that we're having with her are really around, okay, what's the amount of money that if you had to stop today and live the rest of your life, keeping up with inflation and taxes and the lifestyle that you want to live um, and, and the people that you want to also take care of, what's the amount of money that you need to have today to be able to confidently walk away? And once, once you know that number, then you can feel confident either accepting an offer or not accepting an offer, knowing that um, it's the right amount or not the right amount that you need to have. But, but as you said, Dylan, I mean, it's, it's so important to integrate the personal planning with the business planning and exit strategy no, to, to be able to to feel like, um, you know, the amount of money that you're taking in terms of the offer to sell your company is the amount that's going to be able to take care of you and your family the rest of your life. So she found a ton of uh, value in going through that process, that exercise to be able to confidently go back to um, the, the potential buyers. Integration is key. Great is point. Key. And that's on the, the personal versus business planning side. Uh, but I also bring this up because you might be wondering from the start, why didn't we jump straight into succession and, and exit planning strategies when that's the, the topic of discussion today? 
The challenge with planning for all of these areas is that they're all interdependent. So how you manage and, and plan for your business will directly impact you, your personal financial situation and plan, as well as uh, the plan for employee benefits is going to help directly impact your exit planning strategy and so on and so forth. So working with business owners, um, you know, we're always recommending an integrated approach to planning because it's the only way that we can make sure that everything is working together to build the strongest financial situation for you yourself, but also for the business and that buyout. And no one in the room has exactly the same financial situation or business needs as anyone else. So your business is unique, your personal finances are unique, and together they create a financial situation that deserves a unique plan. So let's let's expand on each of these a little bit more, um, dive into the details here. So on the, the risk management side of things, uh, this is the part of the business where we're protecting your business from losses such as physical, intellectual, or human assets. So listed out here. Your physical assets are going to be uh, buildings, office spaces, uh, equipment, machinery. Intellectual assets would be those um, softer assets I brought up earlier, like patents and copyrights. Employees. The third assets to make sure we're insuring for on the risk management side, making sure that we're retaining those key employees, but also making sure that the business stays afloat if something were to happen to them. So some good questions to, to think through as this relates to your business and how well you're doing on this side. Uh, one thing I would ask myself is, do we have liability coverage? And when was the last time that we reviewed it? With, with a lot of insurance coverages on the risk management side, oftentimes we'll, we'll meet with somebody and they say, got it taken care of, I have something in place, but it's been shelved for 10 years and it hasn't been reviewed. Well, your business is continually evolving. So we need to make sure that this coverage that we have in place is in line with the new objectives and, and business that you have set up currently and where you're wanting to go from here. Are you protecting your intellectual property like the patents and copyrights? Uh, what if you become disabled? How would you bring in income and continue to keep up with expenses for the business so everything stays on track? Uh, what, if some, what if something happens to somebody else? like a key employee, are we able to replace them? Can we keep the business going without them? So these aren't the, the most exciting questions to ask yourself or think through, but very important to plan proactively for things that could go wrong rather than just planning for the luxuries in life. Yeah, Dylan, that last, that last piece there makes me think of another client situation that we dealt with a few years ago. Um, we were working with a, uh, a client who happened to be a dentist and he was in his thirties. Uh, the owner of the practice was in his fifties and the owner of the practice had, had pegged, uh, the, this, this younger guy as, as, you know, a, a partner, somebody who was going to buy in and take over the practice over the next few years. Um, but he hadn't done any, any, uh, execution of the plan. They had not written out the formal documents and, and executed the actual plan. Well, uh, one day, um, the younger guy, let's call him Brian, he was diagnosed with cancer and 35 days later passed away from stage four cancer. And so uh, they, they did not have time to put together, you know, the plan at that point, they were in panic mode. Um, and the owner of the business, um, the owner of the practice really, really lost a lot of, you know, patients and at that time, you know, physical patients and, and revenue, because uh, they just couldn't handle, you know, the, the additional um, appointments on the calendar and revenue suffered for a good six to 10 months. Um, they were taking loans to make payroll. And um, one of the potential solutions that really could have been an opportunity, an easy, easy opportunity to, to mitigate that risk 
they they could have executed the documents um, to put together the potential secession plan and funded um, some key person life insurance on the younger uh, dentist to be able to you know fund any type of of loss in revenue that they that they saw and that would have been an easy fix and something that they knew obviously after the fact um, you know something that that they thought about doing but just never executed and it's, again it's just one of those easy fixes that hindsight being 2020 you can look at but it's so important Dylan as you said to to really be proactive on the planning and get some things done uh, as soon as possible that's on the risk management side for the business and also for the business owner and key employees, but um, also thinking through employee benefits on this side of planning. This is actually something that uh, some of you all probably attended to a couple months ago. I took a deeper dive on employee benefits, um, you know, health insurance, group life insurance, disability insurance, retirement plans that we can use. And uh, what's the best fit for each business? Because they're all a little bit unique. But I bring it back up here as it relates to su succession and exit planning strategy, because if we have group benefits in place, that is going to help the growth of our business, right? Because we're going to attract and retain great ta talent and great key employees that are going to stick around. And that's going to be what people are buying out on the back end is a system that is already um, operating efficiently and we don't have to come in and make a bunch of changes and really grow from there. If it's all set up and great talent and everything, it's a, um, a very efficient system, we're gonna be able to get a higher buying opportunity, a buyout on that. Or you know, if we're leaving it to someone else within the business or within the family, it's going to be a smoother transition for that and making sure that everything stays on track. So that's one reason why to have some employee benefits set up. Another reason is you know, it's just the right thing to do. Um, it's going to allow you to stay competitive in your market and make sure that you're not going to lose people to other competitors. Um, I hope attract new talent to the the company and also a big reason why we're emphasizing employee benefits with employers is because they can take advantage of these plans for themselves as well yeah often, oftentimes that's a that's another opportunity dylan where where we think about you know we're looking at the exit plan for a potential owner uh, or retirement plan and thinking through, are they putting away enough money um, if the business doesn't sell the way that they want it to sell? And that uh, oftentimes means that we're auditing the retirement plan and making sure that they have the right plan in place. Oftentimes people are thinking that they have a plan in place and they're limited on the amount they can put in because they have a certain plan, but there are, there are other retirement plans available that oftentimes are neglected. And um, taking a step back and thinking through, okay, if I could, how much would I be putting away to set myself up in a position that just in case this business doesn't sell for what I need it to later on, I can still retire comfortably. Um, that's an area that that uh, when we think about you know setting up the benefit package for the employees and making sure that the retirement plan is in place, that we're mainly looking at the opportunity for the owner to put away as much as possible. So some good questions here as you're thinking about your employee benefits or group benefits that you have set up. Um, first of all, would be what's the goal of your employee benefit strategy? And what do you want to do for your business? Do you do you know what your competitors are offering? You know what your employees or, or that talent that you're recruiting is going to see elsewhere and other offers. And how are you comparing to that? Uh, I love this question here, thinking about if you were to start a new job and you're reviewing different offers and you look at this benefits packet, these employee benefits that are being set up for you, how do you feel about those? If you're the employee and you're, um, you know, you're being recruited to your company and you're you're potentially considering to 
uh, contract. How, how do you feel about those benefits that would be set up? Are you happy about them? You feel like there's some work to be done, or maybe we want to continue to shop out and look elsewhere before moving forward with this. I think that'll tell you a lot about the benefits that you have set up already. So moving on here to the exit planning side of things. Talk a little bit about that. So will you pass on your business to a family member, um, a business partner, maybe even employee? Uh, how about selling the business outright? Do you have a market for this? Would a competitor or someone else that you know in the industry be interested in purchasing? Or maybe a private equity firm? You know, what are the different markets out there? It's good to always continue to, I think, really network and see what others in your industry have done. It's good to have those connections, getting their expertise of like, hey, where do you want to be 10 years from now? If you know somebody else in the industry that's already there, start picking their brain. Um, and what's their succession and exit planning strategy? And maybe it's creating networks and connections for you to further enhance your buyout because maybe they're in the market to be able to take over your business down the road or maybe you've considered just closing up shop completely within the family so those are all common ways to to leave the business and if you're one of the people that said you know i think i'm going to leave it to my children that would be the majority that we see. And this is one of the most common ways to pass on a family business, but it's not always the, the simplest setup. You know, some of the biggest conflicts in family businesses are around this issue and thinking about um, the different reasons that that could cause tension within the family and making sure that we're being fair and fair and equal, which can oftentimes be different there as well. Sometimes it's that the owner isn't ready to pass the business on yet, or it could be that you're ready to let go now, but your kids aren't ready, or you're willing to, they're not ready to take on the business yet, or maybe one of them is. Um, or if you have multiple kids, maybe they don't agree on major business decisions. So there are a lot of reasons that few family businesses survive beyond the first generation. And you have to plan the transition well in advance as well if you want to make sure that you're the exception to that rule. Yeah. And, and many times, Dylan, it's, um, it's the case where one or two children will be in the business um, as executives in the business, but another child or two won't be in the business. And so how do you make sure that, as you said, uh, you know, fair, but not necessarily equal, how do you make sure that the estate um, is, is essentially equalized um, to each of the children? And that's, that's, a, that's an issue that a lot of owners deal with. Um, we see one, there's one in particular that, that we're working with now who has uh, one child in the business. She's an executive at the at the firm and there's three other children outside of the business that aren't involved at all. Um, so the, so the lady who's the child who's in the business is going to take over the, the company and continue running it. Um, but what happens, how do we make sure that the other three are inheriting, you know, uh, some amount of fair amount uh, as well. So, so those are topics that are, are really complicated when you think of families and the dynamics there and getting it right is so important because nobody wants to leave, to leave their family in a situation where, where they're fighting about this type of thing. We also got a plan for the unexpected. While passing the business to family or selling or closing outright are all common ways to leave the business, they aren't the only ways. No one wants it to happen, but unfortunately it is pretty common to leave a business because of a disability or passing prematurely before we retire. And I hope that no one here that's attending has to ever deal with that situation or their family has to deal with that situation. 
I know it's not fun to think about, but it is very important to plan for. And we we see a lot of times having those conversations, uh, which is so much harder on the back end rather than planning proactively to have things set in place. So I, I've brought that up a couple of times, but it is very important. So I want to reinforce it there. So what kind, what kind of planning do you need? to do. And these are just some few questions that I thought would be helpful as you're starting to address your e exit planning strategies. You know, when do you want to move on from your business? Who do you want to take over it? Who can take over it? Who has the capacity to do so? Um, what What's the real value of your business and how will you recoup that value when you leave? On the flip side of that, how is the new owner going to pay you for the value of the business when you move on? It's never too soon to start planning for this. And if you wait too long, you'll likely have fewer options for your exit planning strategy than you'd like. So the third core here with the in integrated approach is the personal planning side and you know, as we've discussed, it is extremely integrated into the personal biz or the business planning side and the business planning side integrated with the personal planning side. It's important to make sure that you have financial security uh, for you and your family, just as important as it is for your business and your employees. So here are a couple questions to ask yourself as we think about your personal financial security. If you become disabled or sick or injured, what would happen to your business? What about your personal finances? Could you still make ends meet if um, something happened to you? Can you continue to grow the business the way that you currently are, the way that you want to? and continue to keep your, your family thriving at the same time. How are you doing with retirement planning? Is your business funding your retirement plans while it's growing? And are we completely leaning on the, the business to create our retirement picture or do we have flexibility and diversification elsewhere as well? So just to recap here on the integrated approach, just bringing it all together. When you're thinking about all of the four areas of your business, probably feels like a lot of planning. And it's important, it's all important to your personal and professional success. It's difficult to balance them, which is why having a professional to work with you and prioritize like coaches and advisors and attorneys and accountants make sure to leverage resources around you to help out with this and not try to take it all on yourself. Um, I'm not here to overwhelm on that, but bringing up some important topics and providing a simple reminder that, hey, whatever service or product you're providing, people are leveraging you for that expertise. Make sure to continue to do the same thing because you're going to find value in it, leveraging others' expertise that have experience in these areas of planning. Next, I want to talk about the different stages of your business. Real, really four different um, stages in the business. And no matter what stage you're in, you're still going to be dealing with all four of the components of risk management, employee benefits, business succession, and personal planning. But your needs will change a little bit as time goes on as, and as your business continues to grow. So let's talk about the first stage, startup phase. This is often the most exciting phase of the business but it's usually the leanest financially. If your business is in the startup phase, you've got a lot uh, going on just to get things off the ground and keep them running. Don't overlook these four basic areas though that we talked through, because if you put off risk management at this stage, your business could be derailed right out of the gate by something unexpected happening and have to turn around and go find another W-2 job which is why you stepped away in the first place, to not have to do that. 
if you put off employee benefits, planning for that, you might not, not attract the employees that you want to really get that exponential growth out of the gate that you're looking for. And doing that personal planning helps you stay ahead of things and make sure that your plan stays on track to accomplish your personal goals, but also make sure that if you're financially sound as the business owner, all of our businesses have ups and downs, and it'll allow you to weather the storm for a longer period of time to stay in the game and never have to step out. Let's talk about the growth phase. So when you get past the startup and move into growth, now you're expanding, you're hiring, you're probably feeling like there's never enough time to get it all done. The growth phase can happen many times throughout the business. We're always going through growing pains as well, which can be exciting and stressful. But don't, during those times, it's also important to review plans that you have in place and start expanding on them to keep up with your changing business and, and personal life needs. When you get to the maturity phase, now you're on cruise control. Your business is successful, probably making good money too. And you can afford um, the icing on the cake, if you will, provide more benefits to employees who have helped you grow this business. And at this point, you're, you're making sure that your secession plan reflects how you want your business to function once you move on. And you can reward yourself by making sure that your personal financial needs are on track as well today and in the future. Then we get to the transfer phase. So in the transfer phase, you're, you're ready to move on. The transition plans you've made up until now, you're starting to realize them. Uh, you might be getting ready for your kids to take over the business, or maybe you're working with somebody to buy you out. You've got some hard choices to make as you're implementing uh, your plans in this phase, financially making sure that the value of the business is reflected in your exit plan. And then there's the softer side of things. So it's it's emotional when you pull yourself away from the business that you built. Sometimes that can be the most difficult part, part of the exit planning and secession planning strategy. Again, coaching opportunities there to talk through that. Don't take that all on your own. Yeah, Dylan, it makes me think of another client we're working with who who's considering uh, selling, but it comes with, um, you know, staying on board for a few years, you know, three to five years to maintain client relationships and keep the business uh, running smoothly. And and he's just not sure if he wants to, uh, you know, let someone else be the boss for that period of time. You know, the the emotional, psychological side of it is so key. The money is one thing, the, the math part is is kind of the easy part of the the equation but then you think about the you know am I, am I really ready to not be the one in charge completely um that's that's a really difficult transition to have to make so having people to bounce those those ideas off of and talk to is is really critical it'd be nice to know if like if somebody could tell you exactly what phase you're in as well Dylan if you know as we're going through yeah. these phases you know that that would be uh that'd be really really nice to have well, I think that's uh, an additional benefit from working with advisors. And when I say advisors, I mean you and I, but also many other advisors, coaches, sure. mentors, business coaches, SBDC. I mean, great resources that you all already have exposure to. So yeah. continuing to emphasize the importance of that because there's so much value in that. So in short, I mean, leverage experts for help, just like others have leveraged you and your services for the expertise that you provide. And if this talk today is it's resonating with you, please reach out because we love collaborating to explore how we can serve, whether that's helping you and your business or, or being a connector for you or collaborating with any of the coaches or mentors on the call as well really enjoy that. 
So I wanted to wrap up here so that we can get to the, the Q&A here. I think we, we said we'd leave 15 minutes and we're right there. But just to recap, a little review, what we've covered today, identifying and prioritizing your goals and concerns or common objectives that we hear, the four asset classes of your business, the key financial areas of your business, the stages of your business where you need to continue to focus on each of those key financial areas of your business. Don't wait till down the road and why it's a good idea to have trusted advisors in place to work with. So I'll um, stop there, David, Janet, or Michael, unless there's anything else you wanted to add, I thought we'd um, take some questions. All right, let's do that. Um, first, I, I'm going to throw something at you. Maybe you can talk a little bit about it. But, you know, uh, everything you talked about, in essence, is that these are the steps that anyone would, would, would take um, to professionalize a business. And, you know, if I'm an investor looking at your business to buy, that's what I'm interested in is a business that's well run. You know, the, the business has systems in place. It's not dependent on the owner. These are all things that, you know, de-risk the business. So it actually makes my business worth more if I go through this process. So even if I'm not thinking about, you know, retirement or exit, following the steps and taking advantage of people like you guys will actually make my business more profitable, easier to run and worth more. Can you all talk a little bit more about that whole process? Well, that's certainly true. We've we've seen that play out with a, a friend of ours who was um, was able to successfully exit a business uh, a couple years ago, and and the buyers were very clear that that they they gave him uh, an additional four or five uh, x, um, you know, going from about fifteen or sixteen um, times EBITDA to twenty to twenty one times EBITDA because of the the systems and the the team that he had in place and the ability to run the business without him, just as you were saying, David, I love the word that you use professionalize the business. You know, oftentimes we get into, into a business and it, it it's, it, we're doing it because we love it. And then all of a sudden, Holy cow, we have, we have a, an actual business here that, that we need mm -hmm. to run um, and, and create those systems and processes. And the ones who, who really do professionalize in your, in your term, their, um, their business they they absolutely can get uh, more value yeah. know, at the end. Yeah, very much so. So where, where would be the place to start? Um, so in your wheel example, um, where where would we start on the on the process there? What, what's the number one thing? Where do you first the, the low hanging fruit to begin with? Yeah, I mean, I would say protecting what you have initially. So making mm -hmm. sure that we're de-risking any any liability exposure to our business or um you know the the continued operations of our business and key employees and the business owner as well um great opportunity to start out there you know making sure that we have operating agreements in place uh something that michael and i started uh when we merged practices was initially right away we had to get an operating agreement set up and what if something bad happens to Michael or me, you know, who retains the ownership in that business? Um, I want to make sure that my my wife Rachel, that she is compensated for my portion of the business, but Michael probably wouldn't want to work with Rachel and Rachel likely doesn't want to be a financial advisor. I can actually guarantee that that's not the case. <laughs> um, so some arrangements need to be in place to where if I died or something, you know, injury or illness to me, we have a system set in place instead of negotiating on the back end for Michael to be able to buy me out and clearly stated how do we calculate that? And when is that calculation reviewed each year? How do we revise that? A lot of times we have those set in place in the operating agreements, but furthermore, how are we going to fund that if something happened? Mm -hmm. Are we going to do that out of pocket, you know, cash? Do we have that liquidity? Are we going to get a bank loan to be able to do that? 
Um, oftentimes, life insurance is in place to help fund that buy-sell arrangement. So those are the some of the the starting points that I, you know, came to mind for me. How about you, Michael? Yeah, I, I think defense first. I, I think everything you said there is is um, is accurate. You know, you just just you know, as if you're you're building a house, you're going to build the foundation first. And with the foundation, I think about the defense, the risk management. It, once all of that is in place, you can feel much more confident going about you know, the growth and, and the accumulation of, of, um, you know, wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it reminds me, you know, in business, the people always use the, like the, the military analogy about going into battle and stuff. And, you know, we, we work a lot with veterans and, and, uh, the folks down at Fort Knox. And I've noticed that, um, you know, in discussing things with these guys, you know, in the military, they, you know, they may have a plan for an objective, but they also have maybe four or five plans along the side that are contingency plans for, well, what if this happens? Well, then this is what we think we'll do. So it's not like bad things happen, like, you know, now what? They already kind of know what, and you know, this is basically what you're talking about, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. And and they 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 can feel really comfortable with all those various contingencies because they have their basic foundation in place. They mm -hmm. They know where to go back to um, you know, when stuff hits the fan and, yep. and, and I think that's really important. Just like, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're trying to protect your family, you know, and, and take care of college education and retirement, you're not, you're going to get, you're going to get the basics down first before you take all your money to the track and put it, put it on, on the four horse, you know? Yep. Yep. Um, I think it's just really important to have that foundation in place to fall back on. Yeah. I, At least that's know, what you should do. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know that uh, I uh, also I have a story. So I um I learned the kind of contingency about um like something if it were to happen to me, like not that I died, but what if I just couldn't show up to work anymore? What would happen? You know, and like one day, a little aside, I I don't know, I was in a bad mood, and I really made my bookkeeper angry because I was a jerk that day. And she walked out. Well, an hour later, I realized she was the only one with the password to the QuickBooks account. And I'm like, what? We can't, we can't do any invoicing today. So, you know, having that uh, that contingency where, like, so if something happens to me, then everyone knows, here's the guy you call. Maybe it's an attorney who has all the passwords or all those sort of things. Or here's the next steps, you know. So, um, you know, just these basic things are just just so, so important. And, and you don't really think about it until... So it's like too too late, you know, sometimes. So yeah, so like, and, yeah, and there are resources. Dylan, there are resources available, you know, for for families and business owners to to document, you know, all of those types of things and make sure that that there's a process in place. Um, David, as you mentioned, when when things like that happen. Yeah. Dylan. I was just thinking more about like, you know, we're bringing up a bunch of stuff that we need to think about or do have some plans in place. And it sounds like a bunch of work and, you know, we have to do this as a business owner, but it is all like making sure that all of your hard work is paid off. Mm -hmm. Right. We're talking about two sides of the planning. One is if something bad happens to us, something unforeseen, making sure that you and or your family is still reaping the benefits of all the hard work that you've put in, all that elbow grease, as well as financial input. And then on the back end as well, it's directly enhancing the, the payout, you know, that you're going to receive on the back end so that all that hard work pays out. Mm hmm. David, yeah. there was a question that popped up in the chat there. I don't yeah. know if you can yeah, address Mary, that now yeah. or not. Sure. Yeah, Mary, um, again, Mary Niekamp is a great resource there in the uh, Office of uh, Economic Development. She she does do the state expansion, the STEP program, where you can get um, grants and other financial um, help. Like if you want to do a, you know, to looking to exporting, you want to go to oh, maybe on a trade, trade mission or something like that. So... Make sure you reach out to uh, to Mary. It's good. She's a good resource. But Mary asks, any recommendations on where the best place or way for selling a business? How how do you advertise to sell the business, and how do you find a buyer? 
Yeah, in in our experience in the past, you know, the the, the ways that we've noticed um, it, at least at least the most successful types of conversations to occur is get it get the word out there. You know, not necessarily blast it out in some type of advertisement or anything like that, but but get the word out there amongst your advisors. You know, your advisors, your attorney, your CPA, your financial advisor, your insurance broker, they they are some of the most well-connected individuals in, in town or in the region. And, and they're going to have a lot of opportunities <clears throat> to have conversations with others that might end up, you know, knowing at least your next, your, your, your buyer there. And there are of course, business brokers, that's their job is to uh, find and, you know, the, the buyer um, for a potential business. And we've seen that work very well in the past as well. So, so I think the opportunity is to have conversations, you know, get speak to the people who who know um, who have those wide networks, get evaluation done so that you understand what you're working with, and and uh, you know it just seems like it like with anything in life, once you start thinking more about it, things tend to happen. And talking yeah. more about it, yeah, I'm just keeping right. it right here. Yeah, great point. But but going back to what we were talking about. If I was thinking about selling my business, I would be thinking I need to sell my business, not today, but two years from now, because that gives me the opportunity to do all the things we talk about, to professionalize the business, to increase the value, to make it an investable asset that, that I can market easily. Yeah. Begin with the end in mind, you know, yeah. plan by design, not by default. <laughs> very, very important. Yeah. Um. That's about all the questions we have. We're kind of at the end there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and that's also a good comment there, Mary. Uh, yeah, we will uh, send everybody a recording today. So this is this has been so so good uh, information. I really appreciate you guys sharing as much uh, as you did. It's way over the top. So thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, our pleasure, David. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. So uh, thanks for joining us again for another Toolkit Tuesday. Janet, thanks for driving the ship for us as always. Another good Tuesday. Thanks. <laughs> and Dylan, Michael, once again, um, thanks for everything you guys do for us. And to please reach out, everyone, um, to Dylan and Michael. I mean, they are great resources, and you, they should be part of your, your team. You know, you should be build a, a professional team around you, and they should be your front line. So. Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Thank you, David. Happy right. to serve. Bye, guys. We'll see you guys next time to another Toolkit Tuesday.